Hey, so I know I got to tell you these details, but I want you to start your staging business the right way. And I have to tell you about how I nearly blew my business before I even started. It was not good. So I'll meet you on the other side and I'll tell you all about it. So you know what? I made three big mistakes and I don't want you to make these same mistakes when you start your business. Do not go there. Okay. So these are the three things that I did that I don't want you to ever do. So first one is do not spend all your time preparing marketing materials. Everybody will tell you, you got to get your marketing stuff done, spend all that downtime when you're beginning, start doing that. And I'm going to tell you, all you need to have really is a business card with your name on it and a phone number or the best way to contact you and that you're a home stager. You need to find those paying clients. That's the most important thing for you to do when you're starting your business because without those you have no business. And then when you make that money, when you have that first consultation, you, you've got revenue coming in and that's what's going to make the difference to help you start your business. So that's mistake number one that I made was I spent way too long working on my marketing materials sitting at my desk for three months. The trick is that if you get out there and someone says to you, hey, do you have some marketing materials? Do you have a website or a page I could look at? You can run back to your desk and you can figure it out. But you need to find the paying customers more than you need to do your marketing. All right, so that's mistake number one that I spent way too much time doing and almost killed me and almost drowned my business, really, honestly. Mistake number two, do not spend all your time and your money that you're investing into your business on inventory before you actually have a job. Now I know that's hard because I know you love to shop and I know you love looking at decor and going into the stores and thinking, oh, this would be perfect for my inventory. I totally agree. Totally agree that it'd be great for your inventory. However, if you go out and you spend money on inventory that, well, you're just spending money you don't have on inventory that you don't need because you actually haven't got a job yet, then that's an issue. And one of the big issues around that is that your inventory is actually an asset to your business. It's a tool of what you use to stage a home. But if you don't have a customer that you are going to actually use this inventory for, then you are going to not be making money on the investment that you just made on inventory. So the key is to wait until you have the job and buy the inventory that you need for that job. You won't regret it. I, I know it'll be hard. You're going to have to hold yourself back, but you won't regret it. And I'll just tell you quickly my little story of the yellow chair. You may well have heard me talk about the yellow chair before. And the big deal about the yellow chair, however beautiful it is, is that that yellow chair was probably the most expensive piece of inventory I ever bought. I bought it long before I had a staging job. And I never used it for staging. I love it and I keep it in my own house now, but really it didn't make me a penny. So I want you to remember that. So wait till you have a job, wait till you know that you're buying the inventory that you need for that job. I'm going to put the link to an inventory startup checklist below here. So you actually know what you should be putting into your inventory at the beginning, but wait until you have a job to do it. All right, so that's mistake number two. And then mistake number three is not talking about price with my customers, not being brave enough to actually say to my customers, this is how much this job is going to cost. And even if it's a consultation that, and even if you want to just say my consultation start at this and this job will cost you this, this is what the investment for this job is. It's so important. You have to have the confidence. You have to pull up those big girl underwear and you have to say very loudly and proudly and, you know, absolutely be confident in your value that this is my price. This is my value. And this is what it's going to cost you. I just had this conversation yesterday with several other stagers about how easy it is to not do that. And then to find yourself in a really sad position, which I did where I had customers go, Oh, well, you never said, so I thought it was free. And honestly, I will tell you, you will have at least one of those in your business. If you do not start talking about your price. So here's what you do. You practice at home, talk to your partner, practice talking about your pricing, practice saying the consultation fee is $285 and I take payment this way. And I take payment before I come to the consultation. 
practice that. Have a script, practice it. Know it inside and out so that you never doubt your value and you never doubt that you're going to get paid. And they're never going to doubt that they're going to pay you because I don't know why it is. But if you don't say it, they think they can twist it around and get what they want out of it. So just don't go there. Don't do it. All right, so there you go. Those are my three biggest mistakes, the things I do not want you to do, the things that you can learn from me and every other stager that this is not the way to run your business. So make sure that you have your business card done, just your name, phone number, and contact information. But first of all, get out there and start talking to those possible customers because that's how you're gonna have a business. All right, don't do the marketing first. Then, oh, in fact, actually, I should just add, you could take that, um, the revenues that you get from that first consultation and then pay someone to do your marketing while you go out and get more business, all right? So that's the best way to do that. Number two, don't buy inventory until you're ready, until you've got a job under your belt. And number three, talk about your pricing. Be loud and proud and talk about your price, all right? So there you go, my three things to make things better for you, to make your life and your business that much more effective, more successful and to be on the right path to go forward. I'm going to see you in the next video and I'm going to share with you even more tips and tricks on how to start your staging business the right way.